Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Peter here. Today I'm going to show you a selection of images I took over the last couple of weeks with three slightly different setups. The camera body that I used was the Canon 80D and the macro lens was the EF version of the 100mm with image stabilization. In the first batch we'll focus on shots that were taken with the Nisi 58mm close-up lens attached for a maximum magnification of about 2x. In the second series we're going to have a look at shots that were taken with both the 58mm and the 77 millimeter Nisi close-up lenses combined or stacked, which boosted the magnification by an extra 30 to 40 percent. In the very last series, I'll be showing you images where I use the Raynox DCI 250 in conjunction with the 58 millimeter close-up lens for a maximum magnification ratio of about 3 to 1. I've done some in-depth reviews for all the gear that I used for these pictures and if you're interested you will find all the relevant links in the description. I'm really happy with the overall image quality that these setups yielded and to be quite honest with you I was quite surprised that the sharpness for example did not seem to suffer by the addition of these extra elements at all but I will let you be the judge of that so let's roll those macros now. Let's start with some jumping spider shots. The first four images were taken of two different specimens of the same species. Both of them were female bronze hoppers that I found on a Swiss cheese plant. All of these shots were single frames and I was especially happy with the sharpness of the last two images. The four subsequent pictures are of a genus called Holoplatus. I found this tiny specimen in the meter box or electrical enclosure of our house. You can see how small it is when it's right next to a bolt. I really love the metallic iridescence of its cephalothorax and the patterns on its long, flat, oval abdomen. The next three images are of a beautiful, rather large male garden jumping spider that once again was using one of the leaves of our Swiss cheese plant as his hunting ground. I was really happy with the colors, the sharpness and the micro contrast in these images that brought out the textural detail of all the tiny hairs on its head, the silvery calissery and the peripalps. The next two shots are of an extremely small, narrow-waisted duck beetle that was crawling on the leaf of our yaka. It was highly iridescent, greenish-brown in color and approximately half a centimeter long. The next couple of portraits are of a small orange fly that belonged to the genus Homoneura. I managed to capture it both from above and also from the side, which allowed me to narrow down the identification. I've got another fly species in this series. This one belongs to the genus Fania. I was really happy with this final image in which I managed to stack 10 individual images for a greater depth of field. I really like the refracted colors on those large translucent wings. This next portrait is another stacked image which consists of four shots. This spider species is called a white-tailed spider because of the whitish tip of the abdomen. They are known to bite humans, which can cause local swelling and pain, and on rare occasions it can also cause nausea, vomiting and headache. The following two macros are of orb weavers that I captured at the local wetlands. That location seems to be absolutely teeming with orb weavers at this time of the year. In the second shot, which is of an eastern bush orb weaver, you can see all the intricate patterns on the abdomen, which kind of looks like an abstract painting in my opinion. The next two images are of baby tooth moss that I found on a partially disintegrated wooden fence. The first shot was taken at the lowest magnification ratio with the focusing ring turned all the way to infinity and contained three images while the second stack was blended together from five layers at the maximum magnification. Our last subject in this first series is a globular springtail. Springtails are such fascinating little creatures and if you want to learn more about them I recommend you check out an educational video of mine in which I cover many amazing scientific facts on these tiny hexapods. The first three images were of an extremely small nymph that would have been no longer than 2 millimeters, and in the subsequent images you can see some adults that were considerably larger. In the second last shot, the darker little subject to its right is another even smaller springtail called Nianura that actually doesn't even have a jumping organ and in the very last shot, which is my favorite, you can see an adult with amazing patterns on its abdomen and I really love those rather large spiky hairs on it too, they looked quite funky.
In the second batch of images that were taken with both Nisi close-up lenses stacked, we're gonna start with some ends. By the way, if you're enjoying the video and you're new to the channel, then don't forget to subscribe, thanks a lot. So in these first couple of shots, you can see rainbow ends that I found in our backyard. They must have a rather large colony nearby as I have seen many of them commuting along the wooden fence. The third image is of another ant species called the mono ant that has a highly reflective exoskeleton and I spotted this one on our fig tree. Our next subject is a tiny whirligigmite that I managed to capture from above. I also have a really cool extreme macro footage of a specimen preening itself. I will leave a link to that video in the description. The next three macros were taken of a small tiger fly that was covered in tiny water droplets on a chilly morning. I captured these at the local wetlands as well. I especially loved the very last shot for which I had to up the ISO quite a bit to bring out some green in the background. The next few shots are of some jumping spiders again. The first side portrait is of a very small female bronze hopper that was resting on a blade of grass. And the next couple of shots are of an extremely cute garden jumping spider. This one was most likely a female six marked jumping spider that was looking for potential preys, jumping from one leaf onto another on a small sapling. Our last subject taken with this setup was a male long spur garden sack spider. I think it was mating with a female that was hiding inside that retreat sack. You can see part of her whitish abdomen near his front legs. In the first portrait I had to zoom out all the way to try to capture as much of his environment as possible. Then you can see how much more detail we get at the maximum magnification ratio. I had to be quite careful as sex spider bites can be painful and can even cause skin ulceration but luckily they are quite uncommon to bite humans. In the very last shot I managed to stack two images but I was so close to him and didn't really want to bother them any longer. Our first subject that I took with the Raynox DCI 250 and the Nisi 58mm combo was a social house spider also known as a little humped spider. It was very breezy when I attempted to take these stacked shots so I was struggling quite a bit. I easily could have taken many more images to create deeper stacks and even though certain focal planes were missing you can still see some amazing detail of the uniquely shaped body of this spider species. The next three shots were taken of a mono end that you already saw before. I was really happy with some of these extreme macros because if you look closely you can see that it was carrying what seemed to be the instar of a lacewing along with some detritus. The following three close-up shots I grabbed were of some springtails. I spotted all of these specimens on patches of moss on the trunk of our fig tree. The tiny yellow specimen belongs to the genus Entomobria and the darker colored one is a Neonura that was moving considerably slower than the other one. I left some of my favorite shots for last. I was super stoked to finally spot a male peacock spider in our backyard for the very first time this spring. This tiny male white banded house jumping spider was doing reconnaissance on our brick wall and at one stage I was actually expecting him to capture an entomobria that kept circling around him but he didn't seem to be too interested. In this third shot, which is not a perfect stack, but still quite detailed, especially if you focus on his abdomen, you can see those gorgeous colorful CT, which looked amazing. In the second last shot of this specimen, in which he was hanging upside down in a small crevice between bricks, you can see those massive fangs that they use to inject venom into their prey. Massive is relative though, as they wouldn't be able to pierce your skin, so don't worry. The last portrait of this little beauty really highlights the gorgeous orange brown coloration of its cephalothorax and the emerald green eyes look fascinating as well. I left a stacked image for last. This stack of a male garden jumping spider consists of four images and has tremendous amount of detail when I fully zoom in. Those tiny hairs around the eyes are so sharp and the image quality really did surprise me as I wasn't expecting this setup to be able to compete with a special ultra macro lens such as the Laowa 25mm but I was wrong. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you have any kind of feedback, please leave a comment down below. Also, if you are new to the channel and you love macro, I've got well over 100 videos for you to check out. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again and see you all very soon in the next one.